I have to admit that I am completely exhausted. This time of year is so full of abundance and beauty and the garden is just absolutely bursting with vegetables and color and it's amazing. Uh, but at the same time, it's this time of year, kind of like around Christmas time in the winter where you're expected to go to so many different things and see so many different people. And uh, I find that very draining. <laughs> So, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that I'm finding it pretty tough to film videos right now, which is basically me talking to a whole bunch of people when I already feel like I'm talking to too many people and I'm overextended socially. I have to be clear that I don't think my garden is what's making me feel overwhelmed and exhausted. Um, at least I hope not. The whole point of gardening for me and the whole reason I started was because I was feeling overwhelmed and exhausted at um, my job at the time which is which was a very demanding office job and I lived in a condo way up on the 17th floor and my response to this overwhelm and exhaustion and I just felt anxious all the time and so stressed out was that I got some zucchini seeds and I planted them in pots on my balcony. And obviously that didn't work very well, but at the time, just having my hands in the dirt, um, just having my hands in the dirt really calmed me down and started reconnecting me with the, the things I actually care about. Um, and it was sort of like the gateway to leaving the office world. So I don't think it's the gardening that's stressing me out. And I wouldn't say I'm stressed out. I'm just exhausted. But I do have to be careful because sometimes in this world of perfect social media gardens, let's be honest, there's lots of those. Um, I can hold myself to a pretty impossible standard. And it's kind of ironic because I've made a video in the past that was talking about the impossible standards people hold themselves to with their gardens um, and how sometimes aesthetics gets in the way of functionality. So like, I'm very aware of that point and I definitely want to fall more on the function kind of side. I do love beautiful spaces, but not if it gets in the way of the way of uh, producing good food in the case of a vegetable garden. But I find myself sometimes falling down this rabbit hole of trying to keep my garden looking perfect, you know, like keep anything that's starting to die, get it in the compost, like see a tiny weed, pull it up, throw it down. Um, you know, you know, maintaining this um, false sense of order in a world that's just trying to become wild again, which is ultimately a losing battle, right? Um, I think it works better if you kind of surrender a little bit to the chaos, keep it in check a little bit, you know, so that you get what you want out of your garden. But this is why I got into the ideas of permaculture, because it was really freeing to be working with nature and not trying to control nature. But recently, I find myself slipping sometimes into the mindset of control. And I think that's what's leading to me feeling a little overwhelmed sometimes. So yeah, I just, I kind of wanted to be honest and say, I'm pretty tired right now. And I, you might notice I'm inside. I'm not even out in my garden. And that's because I just need a little bit of a break sometimes. Um, and especially when I'm starting to feel tired and, and um, overstimulated, that's when it gets really hard, hard to film outside because then it really, like, obviously I'm, you know, not performing. That's not the right word. But like, if I'm outside filming, it does feel a little more like I'm performing because I know that people out there are out in their yards too. And so, you know, they're listening to me filming the video. So it's a little bit 
a little bit more of a mentally taxing exercise than filming it inside where it's just, you know, me and my dog. <laughs> so where I'm going with all this is that if you too are feeling a little overwhelmed at this time of year by how much there is to harvest and how much watering there is to do and how many, how much the weeds are popping up. Like you're not alone. I feel like that too right now. Uh, probably doesn't help that my job is also taking care of plants outside in the heat. And this time of year is, is also pretty intense at work. Like I'm out for eight hours in the blazing hot sun and it doesn't matter how big a hat I wear or how much sunscreen I put on or how many sun shirts I go through. Um, you know, the heat is still just relentless and, uh, where I am, there's a lot of black top and it also radiates back up at me. So it's pretty hot. So by the end of the day, I'm pretty exhausted. So then sometimes the thought of going and tending my own garden after tending plants for somebody else is a lot to deal with. So yeah, there's a lot of pressure on social media to be, you know, like running through abundant fields of vegetables right now. Um, and I think that's, I mean, all the power to you. If you're not exhausted right now, that's great. I'm happy for you, obviously. Um, but I think there's probably a chunk of us that are pretty tired at this time of year from the heat and um, the amount of work there is to do out there. And um, yeah, you're just, you're not alone in that. I feel like that too. I feel like I got off track there. What I'm saying is that there's all the gardening and... Um, outdoors kind of social media posts I'm seeing right now are very much like reveling in the abundance without showing the work. And I find that tough because then I feel like I'm doing something wrong. I'm like, okay, so this person is frolicking through their, um, what they call their, you know, backyard homestead or whatever. I'm not a fan of the homestead term, but that's what they're calling it. They're frolicking through their backyard homestead, just like picking their vegetables. And, and a lot of people don't show, all the watering and pruning and planting and all the work that goes into it. And then um, the videos are more sort of like an idealistic uh, harvesting the abundance type thing. And that's fine because that's their style of content. But I think it's good for me to remember that there was a lot of work that went into their, their garden too. And that I shouldn't feel guilty for not always feeling that sort of like, happy freedom of just picking vegetables with no work that is portrayed so much on social media. Because at the end of the day, like anybody who has a YouTube channel or an Instagram is looking to convey a certain image and a certain message. And even people like, I think I would fall into the category of not like trying to hide things or trying to be a person I'm not on social media. Like, we still all audit what we say on the internet. Um, and so there's things that everyone doesn't show. And so if someone's choosing to only show the super easy parts of, of gardening and not even just gardening, like just this, this whole lifestyle of, um, treating your yard more like an ecosystem, or like a place to produce food versus treating it like an ornament. If they're choosing to only show the um, easy parts of that to try to attract more people to doing it, like that's great. I think it's just remember that everybody, <laughs> I don't want to say has an agenda. That sounds like a conspiracy theory, but it's true. Like everybody has a certain image they want to convey on the internet. So that's sort of what's going through my mind right now. That's kind of why I haven't been filming very many videos lately. I am filming a video on Sunday. Um, I'll do a July garden tour. I'm really sorry I never did a June garden tour. It was just, June was a lot. June was a lot, man. Um, there were just, there were a lot of things. <laughs> and suddenly it was the end of June and I hadn't filmed a tour and I thought about trying to cram one in and then I thought, well, you know, let it go film a July tour. It'll be fine. And on, ultimately that's kind of come and bit me. I, can, I think I've kind of suffered from that. I wish I had filmed a June tour. But yeah, 
This video is getting kind of long and rambly and um, I just kind of wanted to come say hi and say, hey, I'm still here and the garden's still here and I'll be filming a July tour on Sunday. So hopefully that'll be out next Friday. And I hope that if you're feeling a little overwhelmed and a little exhausted like I am right now, that you kind of can take a step back and give yourself some grace and cut yourself some slack. This is what I need to hear right now. Like cut myself some slack and, and take some more time to just enjoy the garden. Like I've been making an effort to just take my coffee out into the garden in the morning and walk around and appreciate it instead of having a running list of things in my head that need to be done. As a final note, I'll say that one of the things that led to me trying to change my mindset about this is that I visited a friend's garden last night and it kind of was like an eye opener and like a mind blowing moment because, you know, she doesn't have a social media garden because as far as I know, at least, I don't think she has uh, any kind of social media relating to her garden. And so it's, it's really freeing for her because not many people see it other than people who see it in person. And so she doesn't hold herself to these impossibly high standards of what you see on the internet. And it was just so wonderful to go walk through this incredible garden she's created over the last seven years that has, you know, I, I don't know how many fruit trees she has, like 10, 15, something like, like a lot of fruit trees and vegetables and berry bushes and like all sorts of ornamentals too, vines. It was just, it's amazing. Um, and all of it's coming from this place of just like pure love for plants and none of it's coming from a place of, of showing off on the internet. And I just, I thought that was really beautiful. And it sort of gave me a little wake up call of like, okay, you know, cut yourself some slack. Not everything has to be perfect. You, you were, you started this passion as a way to escape from what was a very high stress strung out life. So don't make this, this passion into the source of your stress. That's the message I need to hear. So, okay. I really will let you go now. <laughs> I hope you're having a wonderful summer and I hope you're not too exhausted right now. And if you are, take a little break. Okay. Bye.